Welcome everybody, I'm Francesca Ronchini and I'm going to present the paper titled Sunderland Localization and Detection based on convolutional recurrent neural network using rectangular filters and channel rotation data augmentation. The paper has been written together with Daniel Arteaga and Andres Perez Lopez. I'm going to give a little bit of context introducing the sound event detection and localization task. Then I'm going to explain the method and the experiment. I will move on on results and discussion, and I will finish with conclusion and future work. Sound event localization and detection can be seen as the union of two separate and independent tasks, the sound event localization and the sound event detection. For sound event detection, we refer to the identification of presence of independent or temporally overlapped sound sources, correctly identified to which sound class they belong. So if we have a waveform, the sound event detection task should be able to detect the onset and the offset of the sounds and the class that they belong to. The sound event localization can be considered as the estimation of the sound event direction in space with respect to a microphone when an event is active, that can, can be referred as direction of arrival estimation. So it means that the sound event localization task should be able to detect the elevation and the azimuth angle where the source is coming from. Until the 2019, the two tasks were studied separately, and it was only in the 2019 that has been introduced the CellNet, which was the first convolutional recurrent neural network to study the two tasks together, and that has been introduced as baseline for the DK Talent 2019, and that has been introduced as baseline for the DK Talent 2020 as well, with some improvement coming from the highest rank uh, architecture of the talent of the previous year, um, the previous year talent. As presented on this paper, the CellNet is a convolutional recurrent neural network, taking the spectrogram as input and considering the set as a multi-label classification task and the DOA as a multi-output regression task. So the last layer of the, so at the end, the network is gonna be divided on two separate branches. The first one considering the set task, and it is using two fully connected layers with sigmoid at the last layer. And the second branch, considering the DOA task, is uh, formed by two fully connected layers, considering the TAN activation function as the last layer for the last layer. Our method is an improvement of this cellnet, of this uh, baseline system, where we are considering as input the logomel magnitude spectrogram together with the QC intensity vector. This input was considered also on the baseline of this year challenge. Our main contribution is the introduction of the use of rectangular filter shapes with particular attention to frequency wide filters. We had two convolutional layers to the network to increase the receptive field, and we are also using a data augmentation technique based on channel rotation. The cut is available on this GitHub repository. I leave the link at the bottom of this, of this um, slide and this is under an open source license. The data augmentation techniques that we use is based on channel rotation and has been introduced by Mazon on this paper. We are considering channel swapping and channel sign inversion. For channel swapping, we are considering um, 0, minus 90, 90, and 180 degrees of the Hatzimuth angle and the reflection respect to the Hatzimuth angle, so respect to the Higgs zeta plane. And we are considered channel sun inversion. It means reflection with respect to the Higgs y plane. So we are considering the opposite elevation angle. So what does it mean? It means that if the source is coming from this particular direction, we are considering swapping of 90, 180, and minus 90 degree considering both azimuth angle and considering both elevation angles. So it means we are considering 15 patterns more plus the original position. And this is why it's called fixing patterns technique. The hyperparameter used for this particular experiment were 960 point Henny windows with a 50% of op size, a Melbourne filter of 64, then if we increase the training development set from 400 to 1,200 files, so we are considering two augmented audio samples for each file on the data set. We are using HADA method as optimization techniques, and we consider a sound event as active if it exceeds a threshold of 0 0.5. The data set that we use for the experiment is the one provided for the DKS Challenge 2020, which is the town in Spatial Sound Event 2020 which has been provided under two different formats, the ambisonic and the microphone array. We are only using ambisonic data. 
The data set is composed by 700 sounds events coming from 14 different categories, which has been combined with room impulse responses from multiple sounds, source direction and distance from the recording position. And the sound source can be static or can be dynamic. The data set has been divided on development data set and evaluation data set. The development data set is 601 million long sound sources recording, which has been divided in six splits. And we use the same split for the development part in order to compare that were proposed for the challenge in order to compare the data with the baseline results. And the evaluation data set is 201 million long sound sources recording. So the experiment can be seen as two sub-experiments where in the first one we explore different rectangular filter shapes to understand the filter size which give the best performance. And after selecting the filter size that best perform, we consider different data augmentation techniques in order to improve the metrics and reduce overfitting. In the first part of the experiment, we are considering rectangular filter shapes of size T per hem, where T is the time dimension and hem is the frequency dimension. We hypothesize that considering almost all the log mal coefficients per frame will add the network to better understand the spectral structure of the sound and consequently better model the frequency dimension helping the system to learn the presence or absence of an event and to improve the metrics for localization and word detection. The, the use of rectangular field filters has been introduced by Pons on this paper for music for classification task. So we propose the same concept, adapting it to sound event uh, detection task. On the second part of the experiment, we consider different data augmentation techniques to improve the metrics and reduce overfittings in particular, concentrating on time stretching, pitch shifting, and channel rotation. In order to evaluate the system, we use the same evaluation metrics proposed for the challenge, considering two location-dependent metrics for sound event detection task, the half score and the error rate. And we use two classification-dependent metrics for the sound event localization task, which are the localization error and the localization recall. So now let's move on to the results. I will first um, describe the results on the development data set and then on the evaluation data set. So regarding the development data set, we test different rectangular shapes. All of them outperform the baseline results, but the one that gave the best performances are the one per 48 and the one per 50 filter size, where one is the time dimension and F, and um, I mean, the second dimension is the frequency dimension. And we try also using and considering all the mal band that we were using for the filter. As we can see, the one that give the best performances are the one per 48 and the one per 50, but we decide to use the one per 48 because even if the metrics for the sound event detection task were really similar to each other, it gives best perform better performances for um, the sound event localization metrics. Then we try to analyze also the relation with temporal information, increasing the time dimension just a little bit because we think that most of the information for the sound event de detection task is on the first uh, frames. So we are increasing, but actually it didn't have the network to increase the results to give more information. So we decided to keep uh, the one per 48 filter size and to continue uh, the experiment using these filters. So we put eyes that the temporal information is taken care of by the recurrent layers of the network. For the data augmentation techniques, we concentrated um, on three different techniques, but as we can see, the only one that I did increase the results that helped the network is, is the one based on channel rotation. And this might be explained because of the channel rotation maintaining the physical relation between channels. So we are just moving the Hoku 16. And also because of the down joint network of localization and detection of the evaluation metrics. In fact, it is possible that even if before the source was being detected coming from the right class, so the prediction and the, and the reference were coming from the same class, it was not able to recognize the, loca the location, the direction of the source. So that prediction was considered to be wrong. Helping the network with these data augmentation techniques, what we are doing is creating new direction of arrival labels so the network is able to localize better the sources and then to uh, increment the metrics, to improve the metrics. The results on the evaluation data set are not reported on the paper because they were um, made available after the deadline, the submission deadline. 
but I'm just gonna present to you those results as well, just out of curiosity. So we submit four different versions. They are more or less similar to each other. So there are two versions, one version using adaptive learning rate and average pooling, another version using the filter size one per 50, and the, uh, the last one using only three convolutional neural net, neural, three convolutional layers, sorry. So we arrived 10th and we, were able to outperform the baseline system in, in all of the different versions. And as we can see, the results are really similar to each other, which means the system is stable and it is robust to unknown um, and new data. So we, uh, the results were um, evalu evaluated on two unseen locations, the first one and the first one and the second one. And as we can see in both of them, we improved the localization and the detection um, metrics, and we got good results for both. Then uh, the main contribution of our system is in the case of no overlapping sources, where we have the main improvement of the, of the metrics. And the last one where we have two overlapping sources, we can see the system has some sources that need to be investigated more. So it is the only case where the baseline has better results than our system. The best performance version is number two, which is the one using average pooling and adaptive learning rate. And he could have been reached the best performances mainly thanks to the adaptive learning rate, which helped the network to reduce the overfeeding. And the less performant version is number four, the one using only three convolutional layers. And this confirmed that increasing the resective field, adding more convolutional layers to the network, has the system to better learn spectral characteristics of the sounds. As conclusion, we are presenting a method which is an enhancement of the state of the heart method. We uh, confirmed that increasing the resective field in frequency dimension helped the network to better model the frequency features with the recurrent layers taking care of the temporal information. And we highlight the importance of domain specific knowledge. As future work, we are mainly uh, concentrating on future investigating different data augmentation techniques based on preserving physical relation between channels. For example, using random rotation metrics to rotate the acoustic scene of random angles instead of only discrete angles, as in this case. And we um, propose to explore rectangular feature shapes uh, performances on different data set formats. So they will be part of the future works as, as well. Thanks for your attention.